Hello, my name is TEP392 and today I'm going to be showing you a new memory board that I built for my Atari 800. It's a uh, 512K Exelon compatible RAM card. Now I actually didn't design this board, it was designed by an Atari Age member named who goes by um, Retro Canada 76. <clears throat> it's a um, Fairly, fairly straightforward design. It uses a, a 512K static RAM chip and a few other miscellaneous chips, uh, flip-flop, decoder, some logic chips. And um, that's pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, I, the board isn't for sale, um, but, but Retro Canada 76 did post the Gerber files so you can uh, get a PC board made and build one for yourself if you want. And the place I ordered from them from had a, a minimum order of three PC boards per order, so I, I built three of them and then sold the other two. <clears throat> it ended up being about about thirty-five dollars per board in the you know in, after ordering all the parts. So it's a pretty cheap upgrade. Um, this particular board I made a modification to it. Um, I just added to the back here, I added a resistor and a capacitor, a little RC circuit there to the uh, reset um, pin on the on the flip-flop. And I, it didn't, actually that pin was floating, it was a, an error in the Gerber file. And um, to take care of that, I, I just actually put a circuit so it would, uh, what it's going to do is hold that pin low when the computer's turned on just long enough for the power to stabilize so that it will always ensure it's in, it starts out in the state of being in bank zero at power up. So this is a little little modification I made to it. Now you'll notice there's a connector on this board. Uh, there is a wire that has to be run from it to the 10K ROM OS board in the computer. Um, so that's one other, there's a small amount of soldering that's needed to install this. And it installs in the, uh, the middle RAM slot. So <clears throat> this is the, the 10K uh, ROM OS board. And you know the standard board that's in every 800. And you can see the wire here, I, I soldered that to the back to the pin. This is the S6 line which is used to select the RAM in the area of the OS ROM which is where um, the address that this board looks at for setting the bank. So you write um, you write uh, the bank number to the any address between CFC0 and CFFF and it will uh, change to that bank. So. So let's go ahead and uh, get this installed. So we'll just remove the cover on the 800. And I'll go ahead and install the OS board. Then I'll plug this wire into the RAM board. That and install it in the middle RAM slot. Spacer in there to keep everything still. Tuck that wire in a little bit, and that's it. Oh, and you can. See here, I also have a little uh, Mac 65 cart that I made. It's an Atari Max flash cart, and I flashed it with Mac 65 and made a little label for it. So I can now I can program and take advantage of all that extra RAM. Okay, so I'm gonna. Power up my uh, 810 disk drive. It's it's got a happy 
modification to it and I've got a disc here that's Warp Speed DOS XL and it's got a couple programs on it that I can use to test out the RAM board. So we'll flip on the computer. Oh. I think if I had the power plugged in. Okay, now we'll flip on the computer. Let's see if I can get that screen. So hopefully that's legible. So this is uh, boots up into the Mac 65. So I'll just type DOS, go into the DOS XL menu, and I'm just going to quit out of that and just do a directory in the command line. So see a couple. I've got a couple programs on here. This is the uh, driver for the uh, RAM disk and I've got a RAM testing program on there so I'm going to start with the uh, RAM disk driver uh, so we'll load that and that's going to run and what that will do is set up two RAM disks and uh, see so the driver that actually came with Warp Speed DOS was only only supported 128k RAM card. So I actually took that driver and modified it. The the RAM card was uh, the 128k RAM card was was formatted for um, I think 512 sectors, single density sectors. So it had a capacity of about 65k. So anyhow, I modified this one. To create a D3 and a D4 for each 931 sectors, and they're double density sectors. So each RAM drive has a capacity of 238K. The second RAM drive, D4, the same size. So I can see the I'm going to copy a file, this mem.list. It's a 66 sector file. So I'm going to copy that. D3. And you don't even, there's just like the slightest pause as it writes to the RAM drive, it writes so quickly. So most of that time is just reading the file in. Now, if I do a directory, D3. You'll see the file there, and you'll notice it's only 33 sectors now because it's a it's formatted. Uh, the drive's formatted for double density, 256 bytes per sector. So it takes half as many sectors. I still have 898 sectors free. So pretty nice. You know, I can copy back and forth between the RAM drives and and all that. So you know, next I'm just going to show the um, the RAM test program, and this again was a set up for 128k board I hacked it to check all 32 um, 32 banks in the 512k board so it just goes through and, and tests each bank um, several different tests uh, it's fairly slow it's going to take a while to go through all of these So that's it. It's a little demo of uh, my new new 512k RAM card. So uh, if you want to build one yourself, you can always get the Gerber files from the Atari H website. I'll I'll put a link in the in the video's description. And thanks for watching.